The presidential amnesty program in the Niger Delta region has been bedeviled by maladministration and allegations of corruption, thereby failing to a large extent to fulfill some of its core mandates. Uh, much as the intervention agencies in the Niger Delta are headed by indigents of the zone, many stakeholders contend that the agencies are actually running uh, them from Abuja by some officials. Now, this has in a way affected the realization of manpower development and also dousing agitations and unrest in the region. Joining us to break this down and discuss it is Eugene Abels. He is the Executive Director, Extra Step Initiative. Thank you so much, Mr. Abels, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Great. Uh, because you're from the Niger Delta and you've lived, you stayed um, in the Niger Delta all through uh, the era of the militancy until the amnesty program, you are very, you're in a better position to have this conversation with me. So I'll start by asking, has the presidential amnesty program really failed? Is it still on its feet or perhaps on its knees? Uh, you, what you, you might have not know that um, I also served on the amnesty program. I do know. So I ran the... Yes, I ran the, form, the formal education desk for, for four years, between 2012 to 2015. Well, um, in terms of, first of all, the program is based on DDRO, which is uh, disarmament, demobilization, and uh, re reintegration. The first two phases have been completed. The reintegration part of it has been ongoing. And um, we know that uh, there were about uh, 31,000 ex-militants agitators who were supposed to have been reintegrated to society. And we know that as about um, 2015, because uh, President Jonathan insisted all MDS must submit hand to notes, we know that about uh, 13,000 plus had been reintegrated. But I will not be until the office uh, comes out to publish um, the current figures of how many people have been reintegrated and have people are left, I cannot completely just dismiss the program. In terms of, um, in terms of benefits to the nation, we, we, I'd like to also humbly remind that um, by the time the program was approved by General Yeradwa, oil production had dwindled to about 700,000 barrels per day. And, um, and we, we all lived in Port Harcourt and the environs. We knew the state of affairs then. But today, things have taken picked up that security is restored. It might not be perfect, but it's everywhere. So we can count on those gains. And so far, that in terms of oil production is back, or was back until this recent happening, and, uh, which is not attributed to agitation or any form of, uh, but purely on banditry. And um, we can also count the fact that um, security has improved drastically um, properly in the region, even though not perfect. So, but for us to do a proper cost-benefit analysis, it's been beneficial to Nigeria. But after this administration took over in 2015, um, we have not been advised on what the new targets that were given to them. There have been two administrators before the current one. And um, look, I don't think any clear mandate was given to them, because if it was, it would have been made public. That would have made it easy for me to make categorical statement hmm. until an audit is made and uh, these figures are made public. Then we can say they have done what has happened in the past um, seven years. One can comp uh, we can only measure in terms of what they have received, the number of people that have been trained, because it's more of a human capacity building. That's what the program is primarily and only for, nothing else. Uh, so our measurement of it is how many people have you trained in terms of um, certified skills, how many people have trained, trained through proper education, so how many people have you been integrated in, in terms of um, employment and things like that. Those are the terms in which we need to measure them for what has happened in the past seven years, and we do not have that in the public domain. Mm. Hopefully, Jerry Jomo might be able to address the press by the time he's done with uh, reviewing all that transpired to tell us the way he wants to go. Hmm. Now, the, the same general, uh, well, the General Domo at some point had um, rescinded Mr. President's plan to wind down the program because we all remember when President Buhari had said that he wanted to shut down 
the presidential amnesty program, but um, he did, you know, uh, kick against it. And he talked about something where, which you have already mentioned, um, you know, loosely. Um, he said that the president was determined to ensure that the program is re-engineered to achieve its mandate. But you mentioned that there was not necessarily a clear-cut mandate um, in the public domain. So it's even even pretty difficult to determine if you know any goal or mark was hit. But then there are allegations of fraud and people bringing in their family members as opposed to people who need the amnesty to go for these trainings abroad and travel to other countries, monies are being misused, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, Why do we even have to wait this long for us to still, I mean, you're saying something like, oh, let's wait until uh, there's an audit and then the information comes to light. Where is the ICPC on issues like this? Of course, because we need to know if these monies that are being pumped into that aspect to or rather into the amnesty program is being properly used or should it be targeted at something else that would one way or the other change really better the lives of nigerians yes uh i agree with you uh, but you know like the niger delta development commission you imagine how long it's taking them to constitute a board at a point then this is a functioning with uh, with sole administrators, which is not provided for in the constitution. Maybe it's a style of governance, but bringing it back to the amnesty program. Well, I, I expect that a, an amnesty program is not a program in perpetuity. Even when I talk amongst my kinsmen who are from the region, who say, I say, this one, our own, who would they take chops? Uh -huh. Even when I say, I tell them, for me, my nature of offering it, an amnesty program should have a lifespan. So while it's having a lifespan, I would have expected that in the past seven years, and with the three administrators, they would have said, look, you've inherited about um, 13 or 14,000 people. We expect that X by X number of years, these people will have been able to be trained. And by X number of years, this is where we want you to be. So where that has not been done, or has been done, we are yet to know. I know that under General Bora at the time of hearing things like agriculture and so on, and after that, we've not heard anything further. So it's all a whole mix, and um, we cannot cry more than the bereaved, and, uh, <laughs> and it is about who is managing or supervising the amnesty program, and what are the clear mandates. Those mandates should be made public, and what did they inherit? We are at day to day. Hmm. What have been done? You know, these are clear, they're measurable in this system. It shouldn't be difficult. If we are to give, to peg the lifespan of the program, it shouldn't be difficult. So that the government can pump its chest and say, look, 31,000 of you, we have been able to train all of you. If anybody has not been trained, let them come out. We have our facts. There's technology to measure, to capture people. You have your biometrics, you have your BVN, you have your NIN. All of this, if you articulate them and put them together, it shouldn't be difficult to tell if you're doing well because the number of those who have, who have trained will be quite obvious to you and be on our tables and in the public domain. Hmm. Now, going to another thing that uh, Major General Babagana Mungono had said, he uh, I'd like to quote him, that's the NSA boss. Uh, he reportedly said that... Um, Recently, over 700 billion naira had been wasted on the program due to corruption, lack of transparency over the years. Um, he also said that this 712 billion naira was wasted basically is unaccounted for um, due to issues of corruption uh, being at the fore. And he says that this is supposed to be a very serious program, just as you have alluded to, uh, but that as much as this program is ongoing, monies are being put in, the Niger Delta is still suffering. I started this conversation by saying that most of the people who sit uh, on this um, presidential amnesty program board, uh, most of them are from the Niger Delta. What exactly do you think the challenge is? If, we're, if a program is constituted to help the people of the Niger Delta, with people of the Niger Delta also being incorporated into the program, uh, is it that the people of the Niger Delta are shortchanging themselves? Well, um, the, the appointment of um, heads of the amnesty program is not a democratic process where the people of Niger Delta have an input or able to vote for them. 
these are all political considerations. And um, and um, those who send provide those people are uh, they are appointed for several reasons. Maybe personal, maybe affinity, maybe past relationships, and so on. So, um, for instance, um, we had Professor, the late Professor Doc Ward, and we've had two soldiers now in the, um, managing the program. Well, irrespective of how they are appointed, the Niger Delta people do not have a say in it. If previously they used to have, they don't have anymore. All those who have been brought have been brought by the government. But that's the essence of government and leadership. Leadership is supposed to give all those who have appointed a clear mandates because these funds are duly appropriated for by the National Assembly. They're supposed to be given clear, measurable mandates. And these mandates should be measured. And if they've been measured and they're properly supervised, then they have nobody else to blame. The question is, who do they report to? What who does the office report to? Now, whoever the office, wherever the office is reporting to, should take the blame that the money has been squandered. In terms of retrieving the money, or if actually money has been squandered, we have uh, the graft agencies who have the competencies to trace this money and make sure people, if people have violated the rules and and uh, if there are issues of graft uh, and uh, crime, the, the graft agencies are competent enough to make people answerable to whatever kinds of love committed. So I, I don't. I think it's a little bit too much for the national security advisor, who's a fine gentleman, to come and be telling us that someone has twelve billion that has been lost. <laughs> they should trace the money and get them back, so that those who are supposed to have benefited will benefit. So that the nation will know that one form of liability has clearly been put away. So, for instance, if you look at the number of people you have on the program that are trained, you can confidently, like, scientifically. Say, look, okay, I have 10,000 people. Like, what does it take to train one man in this field? How many of them are for formal? How many of them are for skills? Okay, we're going to budget X amount, and we're going to spread the cost because we don't have money. Now. Spread this budget in the next two, three years, we should be done. If we need to pay tuitions in advance and things like that, it's be done. So once you're done, you're done. So I, I, I think uh, it, it begs the issue for we as a nation to say that we cannot manage or supervise or make a small office like the amnesty program accountable instead to allow them to continue to generate liabilities in contracts and paid contracts for the nation this is completely unacceptable let me let's go back to the insinuation that this program is considerably run by or from abuja there is that insinuation that maybe a cabal in the presidency uh, sits somewhere and decides who heads it. The member representing um, Yenugua Kolokuma Okpokuma Federal Constituency in Bayelsa States in the House of Representatives, Professor Steve Azaiki, had said that it could be true that the program has been moved to the presidency and that there might just be a group of people who are the deciders of what happens in the program. How true is that? And could there be, um, you know, a problem with this? And could that also be tied to why the program seems to be standing on one leg? Well, all, all appointments at the federal level come from Abuja <laughs> and from the presidency. All MGAs are appointed through the presidency. Uh, where, where whoever they report to, for me, it really doesn't matter. As long as uh, the leadership, which is the president, gives clear mandates, or whoever is assigned it to, is made to account for his tenure of managing and supervising that particular agency. Yeah, so it's not a big agency, and um, there's nothing uh, there's nothing complex about the agent. It's very simple thing. You have a number of people who are ex agitators who have been demobilized, demobilized and are supposed to be trained. Because you don't reintegrate a man if you do not put skills in his hands. You don't give him fish, you give him skills. Yeah. So they're there on this program. They're getting their 65,000 allowance. Those who, if they're not getting them, why are they not getting them in the era of BVN and NIN and, uh, and uh, bank transfers and things like that? Uh, it doesn't matter wherever they were appointed from. As long as they were appointed by the presidency from Abuja, yes. What is important is that the same presidency who has appointed it has the responsibility to ensure that the mandate which has been given to them are carried out. 
and also ensure that the funds are not diverted to any other thing other than that that has been appropriated for by the National Assembly. Um, finally, should the Niger Delta people be screaming more about this? Should they get more involved? Should they be pushing um, for this amnesty program to be done properly? Because from what you've expl explained, there are lots of loopholes that need to be plugged and there are so many things that need to be reviewed uh, for this program to actually work if we must make it work. Um, so in closing, what needs to be done on the side of the people who are supposed to be beneficiaries of this, not just the agitators, but even the people in the Niger Delta, which, whose problems led to these agitations in the first place? Going forward, what needs to be done? Well, concerning uh, the present administration, um, I think that um, all of these are vehicles for development, but we didn't have not heard or have no, have not heard from the present administration what their clear mandates are concerning the development of the Niger Delta. And for the development of the Niger Delta, like I tell my fellow Niger Delta people, has not been tied purely to the April strings of the NDDC and the amnesty program. We have the Ministry of Niger Delta. We have all MDAs that are further in nation have a portion of their budget is supposed to provide for the Niger Delta. So I ask, why are we getting carried away with all of this? What we as a people are supposed to begin to demand, for instance, I expect the Niger Delta people by now should have gone to court to demand an order of mandamus ordering the government to constitute a board for the Niger Delta Development Commission. After almost almost four or five years, it doesn't make sense. The law does not provide for that. The law says if a board is not in place, ideally the next civil servant in the system is supposed to run, not politicians being appointed as sole administrators. The objectives will not be achieved. Now, we have a situation on ground. The floods are here. The roads are cut off. What, what is the... A clear mandate should be given. It's, it's all about leadership and... Uh, and, uh, and measurements and accomplishments and rewards and sanctions. For we, the people in the region, we can begin to make, articulate our thoughts properly. We're being distracted with amnesty and uh, NDDC. No. We're supposed to get a portion of the Federal Minister of Works, Federal Minister of Health. If they're building hospitals, some are supposed to be built in the region. Federal Minister of Housing, if they're building houses, some are supposed to be built in housing. Transport, if they're doing railway, Part of it should be in the region. Why are we getting carried away with two agencies that are neither here nor there? We have Niger Delta River Basin Hotel. We have several MDAs that are funded by the same oil proceeds that are supposed to provide for the 36 states of the nation. So we, the Niger Delta people, I think we need to recalibrate and begin to do what our forebears used to do by engaging the federal government to ensure that every ministry, every agency, Every department to provides for the Niger Delta okay. and ensures that it is imp implemented to okay. the letter. Okay. That's our duty, yeah. All not right. to get carried away, yes. Eh, not All to right. get carried away. If you say 712 billion, I will people collect it. Where are they? Well, I want to say thank you. Eugene Abels is the Executive Director of Extra Step Initiative. Always a pleasure to have these kinds of conversations with you. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, thank you all for being part of the conversation tonight. That's it on Plus Politics. We'll be back tomorrow again talking for development. I am Mary Anacone. Have a good night.